Japanese Tales, The God of Good Fortune The Biwa is the East Asian cousin of the loot. Lord Tadazan wanted so desperately to be appointed regent that he sent for a monk, a wonder worker, to do the Daikini Rite, hoping its magic would get him the prize. He told the monk he needed results by a certain date. Don't worry, Your Excellency, replied the monk. The rite has never failed me yet. I'll have results for you within seven days. And if I don't, I'll go on another seven. And if it hasn't worked by then, Your Excellency, you can send me straight into exile. Lord Tadazan provided all the offerings and all other necessities, and the monk began. After seven days, nothing had happened and he let the monk know that he was worried. Send someone to observe the rite, Your Excellency, the monk answered. I think your man will find there's a good reason to be optimistic. Lord Tadazane's representative saw a fox, completely unafraid of the people present, come and eat all of the offerings. Since the Dakini rite involved fox magic, this was indeed a hopeful sign. The monk started another seven-day period, as he had promised to do. On the closing day, Tadazani dozed off for a moment, and saw a woman walk by him, with three feet of her magnificently long hair trailing behind her along the floor. She was so beautiful that without thinking, he reached out and grabbed her hair. "'Don't do that!' she cried, turning back to look at him. "'What do you want with me?' Her face and voice might just as well have been an angel's, and the enthralled Tadazane only held on harder. With a sharp toss of her head, she freed herself and passed on. Tadazane was horrified to find that he still had her hair. Then he woke up, and his hand was gripping a fox's tail. Astonished, he called the monk and described what had happened. I told you, Your Excellency. I told you, the monk burbled. Oh, I never doubted that the right would work, but I must say, in all my years of experience, it's never worked quite like this. You'll have what you want at midday tomorrow. Perhaps you won't have to exile me after all. Tadazane lost no time in making him the handsome present of a woman's robe. The next day at noon, Lord Tadazane's appointment was announced. He made it his first official act as regent, to name the monk a distinguished ecclesiastic post. And as for the fox's tail, he carefully put it away. Then he set about learning the Dakini rite himself, and performed it whenever he had a special whist. They say it always worked beautifully for him. Eventually, Tadazane enshrined the tail in a hall at Mount Hei, one already dedicated to a healing spirit. But for one reason or another, because perhaps the sharing of the hall was not a very good idea, a special shrine was eventually built for the tail down in the city. The god was given the name Fukotenyan, or Celestial Good God of Good Fortune, and the shrine is still there. The most curious of Futenkenjin's many wonders occurred in 1229, and involved a man known as Simon Nojo, the son of a former official in Echin province. One evening at twilight, Simon Noyo had just left his master's residence, when at a nearby crossroads he stopped and exclaimed, Oh, what beautiful koto music! Then he just stood there listening. The man with him said he heard nothing. What a pity, said Simon Noyo, rooted to the spot in fascination. As soon as Simon Noyo got home, something went very wrong in his chest and he became terribly, terribly ill. He also went completely mad and tried to rush off westward. It took six very strong men to stop him. Then he leapt very high in the air, came down head first, and hit the floor so hard with his shoulders that it looked as though he would have dashed himself to pieces. A gentleman named Takatoki was then renting part of a mansion just east of the sick man's house. When Simon Noyo now pointed in that direction and began straining to rush off, 
his father demanded to know where he wanted to go. Is it Takatoki you want to see, he asked. The sick man nodded yes. Then why not just let him come over? The sick man looked pleased and again nodded yes. The father went over to Takatoki's place, explained the strange situation, and brought him back. As soon as the sick man saw Takatoki, he left off raving. Very quiet now, he picked up a formal hat, put it on, he wanted to be properly dressed, and bowed very deeply to Takatoki. Next, he glared very meaningful at the half-dozen men who were stationed around him. They took the hint and slowly withdrew. The father made himself as inconspicuous as he could in a corner. But when the sick man glared at him in the same way, he finally left too. The sick man and Takitoki were alone together. The sick man looked perfectly happy and went on bowing to Takitoki. Well, said Takitoki, what is this all about? The sick man bowed even more deeply than before. You're a neighbor, you see, and I so much wanted your company. So here I am. Tell me frankly what I can do for you. I must hear you sing and play the kolta and biwa. Why, of course, I'll be happy to make music for you as long as it will cheer you up. Takitoki had a biwa brought over and he began to play. The sick man nodded on and on as he listened and rocked slowly from side to side. He looked as blissful as when he stood listening to the music at the crossroads. Takatoki went on on to sing all sorts of songs as the sick man requested them, and the sick man was in ecstasy. Well, now I've played or sung for you practically everything I know, Takatoki finally declared. Don't hesitate to tell me when you'd like to hear me again, because I will happily oblige. There's no need to carry on the way you did. Next time, just ask quietly. The sick man started bowing again. Oh, I wouldn't presume to ask you over again till I'm better, he protested. Fine, then I will be going. But first, I would like to see you eat something. When the sick man agreed, Takatoki had him brought some rice and dried abalone. The sick man gobbled up the rice with a great clicking of teeth, then scraped the abalone into a pile which he swallowed easily in a couple of mouthfuls. His manners were not exactly normal. Next, Takatoki offered him wine. Normally, Simon no Yo barely drank at all, but now he downed two large cupfuls in quick succession, then disposed willingly of a third. All right, I'll be going now, Takatoki announced. Goodbye. Near dawn, the sick man's father came for Takatoki again. He went back to raving once you were gone, he explained. Could you possibly come? Takatoki arrived to find the sick man in a terrifying frenzy. All right, he said firmly. What's this act you're putting on? I did everything you asked, and I played you all of my music. You should have been fine. What do you mean by carrying on like this instead? Well, you see, the sick man replied, you didn't do everything I wanted. There's that wonderful tea style on the biwa, and I wanted to hear that too. <sighs> fine. Why didn't you tell me in the first place? Takatoki played a couple of pieces like that, and the sick man listened very attentively, nodding as usual. All right, you played the biwa for me, he said. How about some koto now? Certainly, if that's what you want. Takatoki played a couple of pieces while the sick man listened again in rapture. Finally, day came and sunlight streamed in through a hole in the wall, when a dog's nose suddenly appeared in the hole. Sniffing vigorously, the sick man straightened up, paled, and showed every sign of terror. His father and Takatoki realized that the dog must have smelled a fox, and it dawned on them that the cause of all the trouble was Fuken Jenkin. They chased the dog away. Well, I'm sure you feel fine now, said Takatoki, speaking quite conspicuously to the god. I think I will be going. Thank you very much for having had me play for you. I will promise you music at your shrine, too. Simon no Joe then lay unconscious till late afternoon, while Takatoki, very upset over what had happened, took his two sisters to the Fukunjin Shrine and went on playing the kota and biwa with them for the pleasure of the Shrine God.